Okay, so this this billboard for well, I guess that billboard for X Men Apocalypse has drawn the ire of a lot of people. And Rose McGowan got to lead the charge in how horrible this is with this casual depiction of violence towards women. Because you have a shapeshifter who is being choked by a person who is essentially a mutant god. Okay. I, I will now throw in some spoilers to X-Men Apocalypse later on through this. <clears throat> now, if I were to be taking these things at all from a, a much more serious standpoint, then I would then be afraid that every time they've done a poster for The Hunger Games, that they're actually saying it's okay to so women on fire. Because quite often they showed, you know, the same person, Jennifer Lawrence, either self-immolated or with fire all around her and behind her. I also get to this tagline, only the strong will survive, because this is called Apocalypse. And if you were to do any, I mean, a basic Google search would let you know, or a Bing search or anything, would tell you that the mutant known as Apocalypse pretty much fully 100% believes almost in Darwinian evolution. That only the strong are the ones that are fit to survive. Survival of the fittest. Okay. The, the downside is <clears throat> if you want to look at female empowerment in the superhero genre, the X-Men universe has done a tremendously great job of this. In the first X-Men film, your team had Jean Grey, woman. She did stuff. Storm, Another woman. Oh, and guess what? She was black. So by the time Avengers hit their what, the second Avengers film, when they actually included an African-American superhero, X-Men did it before then. It had two women on the team. Oh, and it had Rogue. So it had a third female character who had dialogue. Just saying. <clears throat> now, of course, in this film, who is your, your principal person who really gets the ball rolling? When they show Storm earlier, Storm has a poster of who? Mystique. She's considered the hero of the X-Men universe. Big shock, huh? Who is the person who helped save everybody towards the end of the last X-Men film, Days of Future Past? Mystique. Who is the person whose capture led to the self-evolving mutants? Mystique. You seen a pattern here? You seen how important that character is with the last film and then in this film? <clears throat> Now, this specific portion of the film, so here goes into being a, a spoiler. <clears throat> she shapes it as another character, walks up and tries to kill Apocalypse. It does not work. He grabs her by the throat. She then reveals herself to be Mystique. That then forces Storm to change sides. The only reason why the x men to defeat Apocalypse? She used her connection to Magneto. Magneto sees this happening turns on Apocalypse. Storm sees her hero, the woman she idolizes, being attacked by this person, therefore realizes she's on the wrong side of said con conflict, turns against Apocalypse. Okay. Who is the person who fully defeats Apocalypse? Both on the regular plane and in the astral plane. Jean Grey, a female character. So you have a female character who is your, your main figurehead. When she's up at the, at the, the X-Men School, Xavier School for the Gifted, she's been there, they go, oh, she's here. Who gives the great emotional speech? You're not students, you're X-Men, we have to go fight a god. It's her. So, so wait a minute, this, this character, she's, she's the linchpin of the movie, effectively. And she is shown at the mercy of a villain who, throughout all of the commercials, is essentially a god. And you can tell there's mass destruction behind him. Would it have been better to have shown instead Apocalypse launching all the nukes into space? That is an, an immensely powerful scene. Because when that scene happens, that's what helps change the complexion of the fight. Because the X-Men, at that point, they're losing. But she puts herself in direct harm's way. Trying to trying to essentially save the day. It's the fact that she puts herself in that position. That that is what happens. That's what convinces other people to finally join forces with her to defeat Apocalypse.
that's actually a ridiculously pivotal moment in the entire film. And it happens because of a female character. If anything, there's too much of a spoiler in that one image. Is it worth getting all bent out of shape over? No. No. I mean, if people are okay with, like, the, the, the picture for Trainwreck, where it's Amy Schumer with the guy behind her and she's drinking out of a paper bag, to indicate that she's probably an alcoholic. But that's okay, it's a comedy. You can do that. You know, this is one of those... If, if somebody sees this, and they're like, Oh, it's totally okay for me to assault a woman now. Because casual violence on a women is okay. That, that person was looking for any excuse possible. As a pivotal moment, people blow it way out of proportion. I've seen multiple articles now about it. The nice thing all the comments are, I guess when you've got a lot of free time on your hands, this is the thing that you complain about. But you can't have a strong female character and not occasionally have said character dealing with issues that are going to put them in a violence against women sort of situation, especially with this being in a fictional universe. So, so I guess then, in, in the world of, of movies now, women can fight women, women can fight men, men can fight men, men, men cannot fight women. But on the flip side, if you want to show how evil a character is, wouldn't male-on-female violence be a really good catalyst for that? Because it's one of the most despicable things you can do is to be a man and abuse a woman. Wouldn't the height of villainy be showing a, a male figure in a dominant position over a female character? Does that actually heighten how evil said character truly is? Just throwing that out there.